Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. I made two bossing guides already that were pretty well received, thanks for that. And since I've been tackling a lot more higher level bosses, in this video we're going to take a closer look at how to fight Akechi, Guardian Slime, Lucid and Will. Like always, I hope this video is useful and that gives you pointers to take on these bosses yourself or with a party. Before you start defeating your boss monsters, always make sure you're not in drop gear. Got your green and red or blue monster park potions at the ready. Equip the right familiars, make sure your hyper stats, link skills and legion are all set up for bossing. Turn down your own skill transparency and enable outlines for clearer boss vision. Already? Then let's go! We're starting off with Akechi. In the guide menu this trash talking boss is grouped with Lotus and Damien. I think that's a bit too high. If you can take down the Chaos Root Abyss bosses, you can probably take on this boss as well. Akechi though is a nightmare for close range classes. He knocks you away when you get close to him, which makes uh, sticking to him pretty annoying. His attack is rather slow though, so there should be plenty of time to simply take a step back or just dash the other way to avoid getting knocked away from him. Just don't walk too far though. Doing so will trigger a special attack. A notice will appear saying something like, don't turn your back on me. If you see this, make sure to point your character's eyeballs towards the boss. If the skill hits your back, then you're actually dead. One of his more annoying attacks is this one. The screen goes purple and attacks start raining down from the sky, slowing you and applying a ton of stacks once you get caught into one of them. Seriously, try not to get caught or just get ready to use your invincibility frame. Because once you hit 30 stacks, a special animation will play out and the boss will simply one-shot you. Unless you have any form of invincibility active. The stacks do go away over time if you don't get hit for a while. So if you have too many stacks, just make sure to stay out of range for a while. Just not too far because then he'll fire that don't turn your back on me attack. Also, do attack every so often, else Akechi apparently gets bored and the timer will go down. Akechi is a bit of a special boss. He has a unique reverse Uno mechanic. If you bind this boss, he will as soon as the bite ends, bind you as well and start damage reflection. So either make sure to have some form of status resistance active before you bind him or kill him before the bind ends, preventing yourself from getting bound. Uh, also, you cannot take away his damage reflection either. So sorry, Explorer Warriors, you can't actually do that. The second phase has mostly the same mechanics, but Akechi will BM you even more and he will unleash a new attack. This one does a lot of damage and it's more often than not fatal. Ideally, you want to get behind Akechi by the time this deck's popped out just to make it easier to dodge. This should hopefully set you up for Akechi. The next big bad boss is Slime. Guardian Slime. Guardian Angel Slime. He's a beefy boy. If you're at this stage of the game and you're not sure if you can take it on, I highly recommend to just give it a try in practice mode. Slime has a few attacks and some fun mechanics. There is this laser attack that lasers away your health bar. It isn't fatal though, but does hurt quite a bit. A push back skill that also stuns you for a few seconds and a jump attack. Similar to good old Mushmom, if you're on the ground where this attack lands, you're pretty much dead. Ideally, when fighting Slime, you're never on the same platform as it is. Either attack it from above or below, so you're safe from most of its attacks. Smaller slimes do spawn on the map as well. The hard-eyed ones can seduce you, so be careful for those sexy slimes. The other ones just deal damage and are there to annoy you. But they shouldn't be an issue unless you get hit by a ton of attacks at the same time. On this map, you'll also find four different core portals. Beams can shoot out of those that can block your movement skills and they can deal a mean amount of damage. To block these portals, you'll have to shoot those lava slimes that land every now and then into the portals. Aim well and be careful. Pressing up will shoot the slime downwards and pressing down will shoot the slime up. Upwards. If you're planning on soloing this boss, just try and block one or two doors, else you'll be so busy blocking the portals that you'll forget to actually damage the boss. At 27 minutes and 90 seconds on the timer, a slime wave will start falling down. You can use the interact key to place down crystals that these slimes will bounce off on. Your goal is to get these slimes to go into a portal of the same color as the portal that you blocked off earlier. You'll get two tries, so make sure to make haste. Sometimes there also is a golden slime wave. This one needs to go into a portal that is not blocked, but you'll see a notice about this wave as soon as you're done with this phase. Once you directed the slimes to the right or wrong portal, make sure to go back up though, because as soon as this phase is over, everyone who's still at the bottom of the map will explode. If you succeed, the guardian slime is stunned and you can fully damage it for a short while. You might notice that there actually is another health bar hidden behind the current health bar. This is the amount of health that the slime guardian can heal. You can only damage this health bar if you succeed in the slime wave phase. But don't worry too much about it as long as you got your portal gameplay in order. The next Guardian Slime Waves hit at 23.39 and at 20.02. So every three and a half minutes basically, depending on how good your ping is towards the server. Make sure you're ready by blocking off portals and you should be good to go. Good luck with this boss fight, he's very tanky but I'm sure you got this. Next up is Lucid. The footage that I'm using here is from a hard Lucid run. She also has a normal and easy mode. I can barely solo easy on my 30k stat shade but turns out I'm just really bad at this boss. 
Pretty sure most can solo easy lucid at least a bit earlier. This boss has two phases and a third one if you go to find hard lucid. In the first phase, the lucid just chills there on her flowers, spawning butterflies, golems, mushrooms and dragons. Those colored butterflies will shoot small projectiles that deal damage. I usually just kinda ignore those. There also are those other butterflies that float around in the background. To get rid of those, you gotta toot the horn at the statue under the left or right side of the map. Make sure to scream about tooting so your party members are aware of you having their pack. They really like it when you scream toot really hard. You can only get rid of the butterflies once per health bar though, so you have to shave off one HP bar before you can toot again. If there are too many butterflies, an instant death attack will trigger. It can be iframed, but ideally you just toot before that happens. Lucid spawns golems that stand around and a mushroom that walks either to the left or to the right. Do not attempt to teleport or jump over them as they will deal a huge amount of damage. Instead just beat them to a pulp. These guys severely limit your movement so get rid of them as fast as possible because if you see Lucid toot her own flute then she will spawn a dragon. And this dragon either appears at the left or right side of the map and unleashes a bad pet attack that kills everyone standing in its path. You can either hide behind the dragon to avoid getting hit so it will be a real mess if you are blocked by an army of golems. You can also jump upwards and use a floating skill like, like the 5th job blink skill if your class can't do that already by itself like my party members are carefully demonstrating right here. I myself have my 30 second invincibility frame active called Freud's Wisdom. It's a skill all hero classes get, pretty useful as you can tell. A message when Lucid spawns a dragon will appear as well. Keep an eye out on the messages to figure out what Lucid is doing next. Lucid also has a bomb attack. The bomb explodes after a few seconds. If you're standing together with other party members you'll take reduced damage. There also is this blob thing that you can stand in if you're soloing this boss to take reduced damage in case there's no party member nearby. Lucid can also teleport you away, which is really fun, especially when you have a bomb on you or land on top of a golem or dragon. So yeah, I believe you can heroes will that, but I never really figured out the animation for that. So I just accept my fate like a true mapler. She also can spawn sickles that don't kill you if you get hurt by just one, but they do pack quite a punch and usually it's not just one flying your way. Avoid those as well and to avoid an untimely death. And once you get rid of all her HP bars, the second phase starts. This time Lucid is flying around. She can still use her sickle attack and spawn a dragon. The top right, left and lowest platformer will save you from the dragon. The background butterfly mechanic is still there as well, so you will need to toot the horn occasionally. And if you're struggling to clear the butterflies, that's like a dragon spawning or something like that, you can actually reach the left statue from the top platform as well in case you're waiting for that dragon. The bomb mechanic is still there as well, so huddle together or look for that blob to take reduced damage. Lucid still spawns golems, those destroy the platforms that you're on. There is an order to when they get destroyed, or so I've been told, but I haven't really figured out the rhythm myself yet and it hasn't really stopped me from clearing this boss in the last few months, but just so you know, apparently there is a rhythm to it. Lucid has two new attacks in this phase. One is lasers. Taking small steps should avoid you from getting hit. Also, it makes the lasers a bit easier to manage instead of when you go jumping around like crazy. Especially in hard mode, these lasers really hurt. And the other attack is her touch attack or her red form or whatever you want to call it. She starts flying around the map like crazy, get touched by her and you lose a life. Please do not touch the angry dream elf. Stand right on the middle platform to be safe from her attack over here as I am demonstrating. Oh and one more thing about the butterflies, if you don't toot in time, Lucid will unleash a special attack. Sometimes this area right here is a safe spot, but it kinda depends on how the bullet fly, just try to avoid this attack at all costs. Also, while escaping Lucid's attacks, try not to fall off the platforms. In easy and normal there is no penalty to that, but in hard Lucid, falling off the map will damage you, so better not get too used to it. Hard Lucid also has a third phase where you just have to deal a lot of damage in a short time. Make sure to save up your burst when you're close to finishing phase 2 with your party. That's all the info that I had on Lucid. If I missed anything, feel free to share any tips also for the other bosses as well. Just share them in the comments, always more than welcome. And the final boss of this video is Will. Just like Lucid, you're looking at a six-man party taking on hard Will. Will will kill you. So for this boss, I recommend getting healing familiars to make things easier in the second phase. Will is also level 250, so only after reaching that level, you'll deal full damage to him. Will wants to be special a bit, and he has a few fun mechanics that you haven't seen in any boss fight up until now. Will's first phase has three health bars and is split across two maps. Attacking one will damage the blue bar, attacking the other will damage the other one. Once the timer hits 2850, an eye will appear in either the blue room or the purple room and a message will appear. This is where the test starts. Will he will heal up to his fullest health bar if you haven't depleted both already, so be mindful of that, he does heal. 
This test will have to be complete in order to move his red HP bar across the segment divider. When this test is active, a message will appear. Move to a dimension where you'll see an eye appear. If there is no eye in your dimension, move to the other one. Usually your party will call this out as well. You can use your NPC harvest key to move, but more about this mechanic later. Stop attacking, Will, and catch those yellow orbs that are dropping from the sky to activate a barrier. The other orbs deal damage, so don't touch those. If someone dies during the test, your entire party fails and you have to wait for the next test. However, if you died before the test, it's better to just stay dead and let your party members finish it without you, especially if you're having trouble clearing it yourself. Once the test is over, you can attack again, and if successful, Will will be stunned for a while. He also has a special mechanic, that's that icon in the top left. Your character will collect moonlight during the fight, as long as you don't get hit and avoid getting hit by those red orbs, those will take away a bit of your moonlight. Every time you want to swap dimensions, use your interactor harvest key, you have to use this resource. So use it wisely, it's pretty scarce. You don't want to be stuck on the wrong side when the test is about to start in the other room. Will also has a few attacks, but his most annoying and impactful ones are his long range attack that reverses your controls, and his tornado attack that does a hacking amount of damage, especially a combination of the two is pretty deadly. You can see when a tornado is coming, when Will does that, he's thinking really a hard animation. To avoid getting hit by all the stuff Will throws at you, I recommend to always try and stand behind him. That way you won't get hit by the annoying reverse or any tornado really. Try and keep Will in the middle as well, so it's easier to just teleport behind him. If you can't get behind him in time, there also are different ways to avoid that one-shotting tornado. Some classes can fly over it, others can teleport past it if you have enough teleport range. Shade can actually backdash as well, but you have to time it exactly right, which is uh, pretty hard to do. You can also iframe it or just switch dimensions and boom, you're safe. Will takes a bit of practice to get down, so don't worry about failing the first few times. Once you're done with phase 1, Will gets a bit angrier and it's time to start phase 2. There is time to swap out your familiars for healing familiars and charge some of your skills if you need to, then move to the next phase. Phase 2 has the same moonlight mechanic, but this time your healing is restricted. To use a potion, you first have to press the Harvester NPC Interact key. This consumes moonlight, and then only then you can actually use a potion. Regular healing skills don't work either unless you use your moonlight, then they do work for a few seconds. Hence, we need the healing familiars just to make this fight easier. Good news though, there only are two tests in this phase. The bad news is that most Maplers find these tests even harder than the ones in phase 1. This time the test will only start once you have depleted the first part of his health bar. After that, every two minutes there is another test. During this test, you have to keep an eye on the ground. If the ground is normal, hug the left corner. If the ground is cracked, jump away from the corner and get hit by three spider legs. Those won't damage you, but not getting hit deletes 90% of your HP. You can eye from this if you need to, but usually you just get hit and then back into the corner you go unless the ground is cracked again. The spider legs never appear on the same spot twice, there is a rhythm to it and it might take a few tries to figure this out. Will is even more annoying in this phase than in his first one. He can push you away and reverse your controls like in phase 1, but this time he can also spawn spider webs on the floor. Get hit by those and it's a goodbye life. If you fear spider webs, you can also bind Will before a test, but this does delay your party's bind and burst. Usually you want to be close to Will in the middle to avoid uh, getting pushed around into the webs and be careful because his mirror image can attack as well. Even if his actual model appears to be doing a different animation, he can like fake those out. Will also summons a spider that deals damage to anyone who touches it. Just jump over it and you should be good. Just be careful to not get pushed into a web mid-jump. Phase 2 is pretty tough if you get pushed into the webs. If you have a Shadower or Battle Mage in your party, they can use Smoke Screen and that Battle Mage Shield skill to nullify the webs, or at least to make them deal less damage. And I believe Dark Side works against the webs as well. Phase 2 is quite difficult, it will take a few tries as well. Awesome if you manage to beat that, and then it's time for Phase 3. Finally, no more tests, Will doesn't even move anymore, it just stands around, looking either left or right attacking. Will has two instant death skills in hard mode, they do 90% damage in normal. If you see this animation, jump away. If you see this animation, then stand still. It took me a while to see this rhythm, but it's actually pretty easy to dodge if you keep an eye on his animations. Speaking of eyes, you can also check his eyes to see which attack he does. Yellow is stay, white is move. But I do find that looking how his back is arched a bit easier because I can never see the eyes, man. Will will always do them in order as well, so move, stay, move, stay, move, stay. When he's bound, it could be either or, so be careful of that. Someone can also get poisoned, get away from this person as soon as possible, and if you're the one poisoned, call out where you're heading, like left side, right side or middle, and stay there to save your party members from a gruesome fate. Besides that, the moonlight mechanic is still there, this time it's used to clear those spider webs, walk into those webs and you get sealed and reversed. Nasty business, especially in combination with his move and stay attacks. Activate your moonlight to clear two webs, which might save you or your party members life. Besides that, it's just a matter of beating him until he's dead. 
I hope this helps you deal with our boy Will and other bosses. And after a long boss fight, you might be treated to a nice drop like a boss crystal and some cold cubes. Better luck next week. And that's all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Thanks to Niels de Comic, Raar Maar Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varys, Kaudi Mora, Wiley, History Cannon, Backspace, OTI, Safronix, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Digby, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Manchaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Afterlord and the Score MS, Striker Elk, Tide One Pun, Radical Jaws, Riser Are You, Sir Tito, 655, Matthias Simonson, PC Game Life, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, Conra Cristalis, Ace Light, Mr. Anark, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Muka1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Priscilla, Brandon Cam, Vega Botnet, Feco, Victor Sundstrom, Simak Only, Rashid Alharmudi, Gerlando Balavia, Gianfranco, Calderon Canavero, Lucky Beats, Matthew Def, Gummy Bullet, Lord Fazil, and Spots D. Kaiser. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!